Hey folks and welcome to this tutorial on Zoom settings. Zoom settings are only applicable if you have a Zoom account and hosting Zoom meetings. Um, these are the settings that you uh, will set as the standard, as the default settings uh, for all your Zoom meetings. You can change some of these settings individually for each meeting, um, but these are kind of the universal settings that will apply to all of your meetings unless you decide to change them. So I'm currently logged into my Zoom account. So I've done this by visiting zoom.us um, and then clicking the sign in button, which will be in the top right hand corner. And it will open up usually at a list of your meetings um, and the settings, as you can see here, are on the left hand side. So there are lots of different options here. You can see from the scroll bar on the far right of my screen uh, that there are lots to go through. And so I won't be going through them all. Um, uh, particularly because some of them are just not really uh, relevant and, and don't ever need to be changed um, and a lot of them also contain descriptions below that will help outline uh, what it is that you need uh, to address. So the first section is around, uh, around security um, and particularly as you can see this one is greyed out so we can't change this setting anyway so we'll just leave this. Um, but the waiting room uh, is a great security feature and I would always recommend keeping it enabled as standard um, but you may want to change that maybe even if you're having a meeting just between you and one other person uh, then you could take it off um, but you can change that once you're in a meeting as well um, so I would always leave it on uh, again these are just the universal settings um, and then you can uh, turn it off for each individual meeting instead You've then got some waiting room options, so you can customize what people see when they come into the waiting room, so it's just a nice sort of welcome banner, so to speak. And then there's a few options you can change here, but there aren't, they're not really too significant, so I'll be moving on from that. Uh, meeting passcode, that, these are now uh, required. These are standard for all Zoom meetings, so you can't change that. Um, and you can change a, a passcode here for already scheduled meetings, but you don't really have much of a need to do that I don't think. Um, all of these things are pretty standard um, as you can see by the fact that they're greyed out uh, means that they can't be changed now. Um, embed passcode in invite link for one click join. So that basically means that when people click on a link um, everyone always talks about the zoom link or the zoom code um, the Zoom link is the, is the web address that you can basically click on and it will open up your Zoom meeting straight away. If you've got the app installed, the computer program, then it will open it in, the, in that program. Or if you are just using Zoom online, then it will open it up in that way instead. I like to embed it because it's very handy. It means people don't have to put in a passcode as well. Um, so that's uh, a, good, a good feature to have. Only authenticated users can join meetings. This basically means that people have to have a, sign, a signed in account and it has to be authenticated. Um, I keep this disabled as it is limited and then because it means that people without an, um, without an account won't be able to join meetings. So I would leave this off. Most of these settings, uh, it's worth noting, will be uh, as the way you would want them. Um, mostly so most of these settings that I'm going through here will usually be uh, like this when you go through them but it is always worth uh, double checking these settings when you get your zoom account for the first time only authenticated users can join from the web client so that's when you do it on your browser as I was just saying earlier um, this may be a good feature um, but I wouldn't personally uh, use it too much Approval block entry for users from specific countries or regions. Now, we don't really need to concern ourselves with that, folks. Uh, so we'll move straight on. Scheduling meetings. Start meetings with host video on. I can't really see a reason why you would want that to be off, um, but it could be. So this is where you can change that setting. So, but I leave that on. Similar with the participants video um, for your average uh, church setting. We would have these on um, but there may be some times or some reasons where everyone needs to have should have their videos off um, in which case you can do that but this is just um, this is these are both settings the host video and the participants video are both settings you can change when you're scheduling meetings 
audio type, uh, so whether people can join via telephone or computer audio, or just telephone or just computer audio. Again, these are just the universal settings, folks, so you can change it for each individual uh, meeting. There's no harm in having all of them enabled, um, both telephone and computer audio. It gives people the option then, and of course, if they don't have a computer, then they will need to join by telephone. Allow participants to join before host. This is a fairly new feature on Zoom, where if, again, universally you can apply it for participants, in this case, to join five minutes before the start time, or 10 minutes, or 15 minutes, or any time before the start time. The hosting abilities will be limited because, of course, you are still the host of the meeting, even though you're not in the meeting. Um, so people won't be able to share their screen, for example. Um, so it is still a, a safe enough environment for people to be in without you there. Um, but it depends on the meeting, of course. And again, you can change this setting for each individual meeting. But it can be handy if you're running, perhaps if you're running a bit behind. Um, I always keep this feature enabled for most of my meetings uh, in case I am running a little bit behind. It means people can join without me needing to be there. Personal meeting ID, yes, let's keep this enabled. I'll move straight on from that. Um, scheduling a meeting, we don't tend to have this enabled. I wouldn't advise to have it enabled um, because your personal meeting ID is the same meeting ID all the time. Um, so people, if they have it, can come into your personal meeting uh, at any time. Um, obviously, they might still have a waiting. There might still be a waiting room enabled, but um, it's a, it could be a bit of a pain. So I tend to steer away from using personal meeting IDs. Mute all participants when they join a meeting. Again, universally, I would keep this enabled, but you could change this um, for each each time. Um, particularly when hosting large meetings, this is a useful thing to have enabled. Upcoming meeting reminder, again, it's totally up to you folks. Um, I like to have it enabled. Um, you might find it a bit of a pain, so uh, you can disable that if you want. In meeting basic, um, require encryption for third party endpoints. Lots of words there that you might be a little bit confusing. Um, Usually it can be a bit limiting, uh, or it could be limiting if you have this feature enabled, so I would leave it disabled. Um, chat, do we want participants to chat? Yes, absolutely. You can restrict uh, the chat um, when you're once you're in the meeting um, to just people being able to chat with the host. Um, once you're in the meeting, you can also disable the chat as well. So perhaps if it's being abused a little bit, um, then you could disable it. You can have people only allowed to chat publicly um, or indeed allowed to chat to anybody. Prevent participants from saving the chat. Um, it's up to you whether you want to enable that or not. It depends obviously if there's any potentially sensitive information in the chat, then you might want to have that um, set up. Private chat, uh, again, this is just universal folks, so you can change that, as I mentioned, in each individual meetings. Auto saving chats, I have this enabled, um, but t if I'm honest, I'm finding it a bit of a pain, so I'm going to be getting rid of that um, to auto save the chat. But you can uh, save any chat you like uh, as you go along um, in, in your meetings. Um, but as as we said, uh, other participants won't be able to if this feature is disabled or, sorry, if this feature is enabled. Sound notification when someone joins or leaves. I find this very, very helpful, um, particularly when you just play sound for host and co-hosts, um, because it means that if I'm doing something else, um, if I'm, uh, say, doing something on my on the internet or editing a Word document, so I've got Zoom in the background, it's handy to know when somebody's actually joined, so you can greet them and say hello. Um, so it will play a sound for you uh, when somebody comes in. File transfer, I would always have this enabled. It's a good option to have, um, so people can send files to each other in the chat. Um, I would leave these uh, unticked. Um, you don't really need to limit those options for people. Feedback to Zoom. Uh, so totally up to you. I would leave this disabled. Same with this one. 
Co-hosts, yes, we want to have this as an option, folks. Co-hosts are really handy um, and it helps manage your meeting, particularly when it's a larger meeting, perhaps 20 or 20 or more people. It's always useful to have more than one host. Um, they have, as you can see, exactly the same controls as the host, um, but not the ability to end the meeting, basically. And of course, uh, the actual host of the meeting can remove co-hosts as well. So if you find a co-host is causing you any problems, then you can get rid of it, get rid of them. In meeting polls, for some reason for a while, uh, when um, uh, people were setting up Zoom accounts, polls were disabled on here. I don't know why you would want them to be disabled um, because it's only a host thing anyway. Hosts can add polls before or during a meeting. Um, so yeah. It's an option you want to have enabled um, but again this tutorial is aimed around pointing you towards these things because some people might discover I can't use polls well this is probably why always show meeting control toolbar I would keep this enabled show zoom windows during screen share now this is up to you um, what this means is that if this was disabled when you start sharing your screen zoom in what it used to look like in its in its current form so with in your gallery view or your speaker view that disappears so leaves whatever window is underneath but if you show zoom windows during screen share it means people can still see those um, things first so that you then change to a different window so it's completely up to you that's down to personal preference Screen sharing, who can share? I always set this to host, and this also applies to co-hosts as well, by the way. Um, this is so that other participants aren't able to screen share, whether it be accidentally or on purpose. If someone else in my meeting is going to be screen sharing, then I would probably make them a co-host instead, um, the more trusted uh, person. Disable desktop screen sharing for meetings you host. Um, that's not really a, a thing you need to worry about, I don't think, folks, so you can leave that disabled. Annotation, again, this is just a standard. Um, only the user who is sharing can annotate, um, but you can change that during the meeting, so people can annotate things like the whiteboard. Um, so you, you could probably have this setting uh, as it's set up at the moment. Talking of which, whiteboard, this is the next option here. Let's have this enabled. People can save what's going on the whiteboard um, and auto saving it as well. I think auto saving a whiteboard is useful, uh, certainly more useful than auto saving a chat. Remote control, um, this can technically allow others to control uh, the shared content. Uh, so when someone else is sharing their screen, I as the host could uh, request control of that. This could be a handy feature, perhaps if someone has the PowerPoint um, and I request remote control uh, so I can operate the PowerPoint for them. It is, however, a bit clunky and a bit glitchy, so I wouldn't rely rely on it. Um, and it's it's no security concern or anything because people do have to accept that uh, that remote control. So don't rely on it, folks. But it is an option there. Nonverbal feedback always have this enabled, folks. This is a good thing to have. Same with meeting reactions. Allow removed participants to rejoin. Uh, that's up to you, really. Um, you might want to remove them uh, and allow them to rejoin because obviously if you've removed them by accident, then that could pose some problems. Um, furthermore, if you've got a waiting room anyway, um, then I would have uh, people, uh, I would often put people, sometimes put people into the waiting room who are being disruptive instead of removing them altogether. Allow participants to rename themselves. Yes, I would, I would always have this as an option and disable this option. As I said at the beginning, folks, most of these settings are um, as they are set out at the moment. Uh, there aren't many that you will really have to change. Report to Zoom. This is a good thing, allowing users and uh, participants to report inappropriate behavior. Breakout rooms enabled. Yes, we want that. Remote support, again, that's similar to the remote control thing um, to be able to provide remote support to people. Um, you can have this meet, this option disabled if you want because it can actually, in if anything, it just gets in the way of your Zoom uh, menu bar at the bottom. Um, and if you're not going to use it often, then you could leave it disabled. 
Closed captioning, again, similar thing with the remote support. If you're not going to use it, then leave it disabled because it, it can clutter up your menu bar at the bottom. Um, and this is a new feature here as of uh, this time, February 2021, uh, enabling a live transcription service. Uh, this is a brilliant, brilliant feature that Zoom has brought out. Um, and so I would encourage you to try it out and see, see how it works. Um, because uh, there are lots of uh, transcription services available that are paid, that you would pay for, um, but transcription service uh, for free with Zoom uh, is, is brilliant. Um, like most captioning transcription services, it's not perfect, um, but it does a really, really good job. Allowing people to save the captions, again, totally up to you. Far end camera control, I would leave this disabled. HD video, yes, let's have this enabled. And allowing people to do virtual backgrounds, well, they're often quite a good bit of fun, really, so let's have those enabled. Video filters, similar story. Identify guest participants in the meeting. Um, so as you can see from the description here, participants who belong to your account can see that a guest is participating in the meeting. This is only really relevant when you've got multiple people on the same Zoom account. Um, uh, so I would just leave this uh, disabled. Auto answer group in chat, we don't really need to uh, bother with that. Um, only show default email when sending email invites. Again, I would just leave this disabled. Um, most of these options, folks, tend to just, uh, we can just leave. Um, show a join from browser link, that's a really handy one. Um, but again, all of these will be set as they are at the moment um, when you start up Zoom. Allowing live streaming, again, depends if you're going to live stream or not, but this is where you can enable it if you want to. Um, you can show a custom disclaimer even if you want to, it's totally up to you. Uh, or actually, maybe it's not because uh, this is greyed out, so I can't do that. Request permission to unmute. unmute. This is a new feature. Um, as you can see, it's only available with version 5.2.1 or later. Um, so you need to request people's permission to unmute now. I think this is a good security feature because if I have muted myself to have a private conversation with somebody in the room with me, um, then I don't want the host of the meeting to be able to unmute me um, to, uh, to listen in. Email notifications, these are totally up to you folks. I wouldn't worry too much about these things. I have these most of these enabled, um, but it's completely up to you. And the rest of these folks are not really, uh, as you can see, not really relevant to, to things. You can assign scheduling privileges to others if you want. So if you are lucky enough to have a personal assistant, then you could assign their ske scheduling priv privileges to them. So it's just a whistle stop tour of the meeting uh, settings. Um, there's a few more uh, bits and bobs uh, with the recording and with the telephone options. Um, but most of these, again, well, even like most of the general settings, they are um, all set as standard and you don't need to worry too much about uh, whether they're enabled or disabled. Um, most of the features that you need or want will be enabled as standard. So that's a whistle stop tour of all the all the settings, folks. The key thing is to uh, just read what the settings say because there are good descriptions for each of them. And if there's anything you're stuck with, uh, then don't hesitate to get in touch. You can email me hello at damorel.me um, or find me on Facebook or Twitter and don't hesitate to get in touch. Thanks very much. Speak to you soon.